Hi everyone, this is Oliver here and uh, <clears throat> I wanted to make a video for you today because I wanted to talk to you about when you're learning English, why it's so important to understand intonation and stress. So these are two things that go with speaking any language is you need to know how to make your tone sound good, sound correct, sound like a native speaker, and then you want to put stress on certain syllables in the words that you're using when you're speaking English. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about a few tips or things that I know about stress and intonation when you're speaking English. And maybe you can just take from that and consider it when you're having conversations with uh, native English speakers. So one of the, like I said, one of the crucial things to sound like a native speaker is the intonation and stress. In addition to all the words and vocabulary uh, words that you're going to use and the grammar that you employ in your sentences and so on so on. So learning the correct intonation will help you sound more natural and uh, you'll be able to convey your emotions and the meaning of what you want to say much more effectively. So what is intonation and stress? It's the you know, it's the dance of what you're saying. It's the rhythm of what you're saying. If you're just talking like a robot, it's lifeless. Okay, so that's where intonation and stress come in. It adds life to the things that you're saying or what whatever you want to say. So in spoken English, intonation and stress are the muscles, basically, of your words. So it makes your sentences sound much more natural and much more appealing to the people that you're talking to. And when you're talking, you're going to rise in a pitch and then you're going to fall oftentimes after that pitch. Um, this helps you emphasize certain syllables in a word and it, you know, it makes your sentence dance. So oftentimes you can have intonation and stress used and played with differently in the same exact sentence. For example, um, if I say, for example, to you, are you coming to the party? Are you coming to the party? My intonation goes up because when you have an intonation that goes up at the end, it usually in English means a question. These are, these are things that convey the attitudes and the emotions and the intent of what you want your sentences to, um, to be for you, whoever you're talking to. You want them to kind of understand the attitude and the emotions and the intent of what you're saying. It's like, are you coming to the party? Versus, you're coming to the party? It's an exclamation. It's like, you're putting the emphasis on, wow, you're actually coming. I can't believe it, okay? So you'll notice that with a question, are you coming to the party? versus making just a statement or an exclamation, you're coming to the party? When you're doing a question, it goes up. And when you're making a statement like that, the pitch goes down. It oftentimes is used that way because it expresses surprise, and then it also is used to express excitement. So when your pitch goes down like that, surprise and excitement. And usually your voice is higher. So you're speaking more loudly. Um, when we use uh, intonation and stress in sentences and in what we're saying, it adds emphasis, but also contrast, okay? Because for example, you can say, um, I love ice cream. I love ice cream. It's just a straightforward, whoops, it's a straightforward sentence. I love ice cream, okay, uh, versus I love ice cream, not cake, okay, you see the pitch goes up, I love ice cream, down, not cake, okay, it shows a contrast with your preferences, you like ice cream, but you don't like cake, so in the beginning the pitch goes up, I like ice cream, I don't like cake, and then it goes down. That is the contrast that you're going to be showing people 
with your words and with your intonation and with your stress when you're talking. We use it uh, to express our feelings about things because when you're doing a comparison, compare and contrast something, these are used to express your feelings about something. So you can say, uh, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you did that. It's a pitch that goes down and you can, you, you can say it loudly. I can't believe you did that. It's a statement that shows that you're upset about something. You can hear the emotions in your voice. You can feel the feeling of whatever you're saying. I can't believe you did that versus I'm so happy for you. Okay. You see how the pitch goes up. I'm so happy for you. Okay. It kind of goes up and a rising pitch usually means uh, that you're happy or you're happy about something. Whereas a falling pitch, like in my first example, I can't believe you did that. It's, it's a intonation that expresses disbelief or shock about something. And why is this so powerful? Well, it's because stress when you're talking involves putting emphasis on certain syllables in certain words. So when you're giving a speech, you're going to have, you know, maybe a natural flow and you're going to guide the listener's attention to what you're saying. And if you add intonation and stress to that, they'll be able to feel the emotions of what you're saying. So there's words, for example, every word, actually, every word has stress. Um, take the word photo, photo. The stress is on the first P H O, fo to. So you see how the stress is in the beginning? Um, think about the word uh, photograph, okay? Photograph, okay? You see how the stress is on the T-O? Photograph, okay? Photograph, and when we say it fast, it's photograph, okay? You can hear the stress in the middle of that word on the T-O, photograph. Okay, photograph. So, stress in sentences. Stress in sentences is used when you want to really emphasize a part of that sentence, how you feel, for example. I love watching movies. I love watching movies, for example. You hear the emphasis on the word love? That puts emotions and feeling into that word. So the person who's going to be listening to you, they know that, wow, you must really, really love watching movies because it conveys a sort of passion for movies when you put the emphasis there. And there's also other words that require intonation and stress. These are content words and they're also function words. So. You can have um, the verb, for example, to want to, okay, to want to. Um, say, for example, you don't want to do something like uh, she doesn't want to go. She doesn't want to go. You hear how the stress is on doesn't and then to. She doesn't want to go. Okay, so you can hear that, uh, the feelings of that sort of sentence convey, okay, you know what, she doesn't want to go, leave her alone, we'll just continue. It highlights important information by putting the stress on, the, on those words, doesn't and to. And you can use this with really any words and any part of the sentence, okay? Um, for example, you can have the same sentence like I used before. I love ice cream, for example, or I love ice cream. Okay. It's almost like when you put the emphasis on the ice cream, it's like shocking to you. It's a surprise to you that you love ice cream. Okay. So this is kind of why um, these sorts of things with stress and intonation come into such a big play when you're speaking English. And it all matters. It all matters because 
when you're speaking to a native speaker, you want to sound more natural. And so when you're using correct intonation and you're using the stress in your words intuitively, you're going to sound much more native-like and you're going to be able to express and convey the meaning of specific words, clarify your message, emphasize the parts of the message that you want to have no misunderstandings about, and then engage the people that are listening to you. Engage your listeners by using the proper intonation and adding emotions and adding enthusiasm and just captivating your audience. So there's a lot of different tips and tricks that I would recommend for you to use in order to get um, better at this. For example, one of the things that I do when I'm learning a new language or I'm looking to speak a certain way is I'll watch on YouTube uh, different videos or I'll watch on TV different videos and I'll listen and then I'll imitate that person who's speaking whatever language. I'll pay attention to basically what the native speaker is saying, the intonation that they're using, the stress patterns that they're using, um, what they say in conversations, uh, what I hear in songs, what I hear in movies, and then I'll constantly imitate those sounds and imitate those sentences just to develop my own ear for those intonations in that language. And then I'll progressively, and I have, get better and better and better over time. Another way that I do this is by getting out my phone like this, and then I'll record myself speaking. I'll speak to myself, or I'll speak a paragraph, or I'll have an article in front of me, and then I'll read the article in that language, say like French, for example, and I'll record myself, and that way I'll be able to listen to what I'm saying, my own intonation, where I'm, where I'm putting stress in my sentences, and from that I can see how close I am to the native speakers, and then I can improve on those things, such as pitch, or um, where I emphasize my words when I'm speaking. And when I speak, I try and use colloquial phrases. I did make a video about this, about um, slang words and colloquial phrases. You are going to want to learn those for sure and figure out where to put the stress on those words because oftentimes they have to be stressed too. So when you're using uh, common slang and idiomatic expressions in informal conversations, you're going to want to try and use those colloquial phrases too and put the stress in the right places. And you can do this, by the way, you can practice all of this is by reading out loud, okay? Read out loud, read to somebody and then ask them maybe, hey, can you hear that I have an accent? Can you hear where I'm making a mistake? Where do you think I can correct myself? How do you think I can sound better? These are the sorts of questions that you can ask somebody. And you can do it simply by just taking out an article, reading a story, um, make your own dialogues, and just pay attention to uh, how your stress and your intonation sound. And I learned something from a friend of mine who is not a native English speaker, but wow, she speaks English so, so well. She told me this trick and I'll never forget. She said, try using tongue twisters. Try learning all the tongue twisters that you can and practice speaking those over and over and over again because tongue twisters, although yeah, they're made to make you sound funny and they're not really, they're not like something natural that you would say in a conversation, but they do work the muscles in your mouth and in your throat to get to get to a place where when you make those sounds it comes much more naturally so it's it's not just something that you can do for laughs but it's also something that you can use to help practice your pronunciation your stress your emphasis and your tone so let's go ahead and make a conclusion about this okay um there's different things that you can say and emphasis goes on different parts of a sentence and oftentimes when you have a pitch that goes up it can mean 
like you're asking a question. Or if you have a pitch that goes up like, I can't believe it's already Friday. It's it's the sort of thing that when you hear it, you know that they're expressing surprise or they're expressing excitement about the arrival of Friday. Okay, or you're coming to the party. Uh, it's a way of saying, hey, are you going to come to the party by putting the tone up at the end? You're making a question. And so the listener knows that you're asking a question in that case. <clears throat> in any case, if you have the pitch that goes up on the end like that, and in that context, you can't, you kind of will know automatically that it's a question. Uh, she's a doctor, you know, obviously we're asking a question because the pitch at the end goes up or I'm so happy for you. Uh, it's like a rising pitch. I'm so happy for you. And then it kind of keeps on going. That is used to express like surprise and it conveys a general um, feeling of joy and enthusiasm for somebody's news. Um, you can play with emphasis or you can play with stress. Stress, if you really want to emphasize something, is you can do something like this. Uh, I So take the sentence, I really enjoyed the movie and put the emphasis, put the stress on, on the word really, okay? I really enjoyed the movie, okay? Emphasize your level of enjoyment by saying, I really enjoyed that movie. Um, or I want to go to the beach. Uh, I want to go to the beach, okay? You see how the emphasis is on the word to go? I want to go to the beach, okay? So you'll hear the emphasis on to go. That means that they really do have a desire to go visit the beach. They really have a desire to go, okay? So go ahead and play around with that. You can put the emphasis anywhere. Um, sentences and rhythm, you're going to have to practice that. And I would say just have fun with it. And oftentimes you'll have the same word. This is one of the most complicated things. You'll have the same word, but it has a different sound or the stress is different. Um, for example, close versus close. Okay. You see how the stress is different. Close, close. Okay. Like it is close to me and then close the door. So, those are words that have completely different meanings, and you can hear the difference, but they are spelled the same. Uh, you have other words like that, especially when it comes to the differences between uh, regions. For example, you'll have American English versus British English, and an American might uh, emphasize, you know, water, we say, wat water, and in Britain they say water. <laughs> so the emphasis is much more on the T, I hear, and you're going to come across things like that all the time. So most importantly is when you are learning English, you got to just have fun with it. And I highly recommend imitating the things that you hear on TV and movies and to find a speaker that you really, really, really enjoy listening to and you really like their accent, and you really like their pronunciation, and stick with them. And then try repeating everything that they say with the correct intonation, stress, emphasis, everything. Okay? So these are some tips that I have for you to practice speaking English. I hope this helps, and definitely I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Take care.